In today's video, we're going to be talking about the three cities in Florida that are really being hit hard. And by that I mean insurance crisis, fees that are going through the roof, not a whole lot to offer in the city itself if I'm being honest, and an abundance of homes on the market. Problems galore everywhere, infrastructure problems. We're going to be talking about those three cities in today's video. Now I'm going to start by saying if you were thinking about buying in these cities, my videos are always for educational purposes. So just because I'm telling you these things, I am not saying to you don't buy here. I'm not saying that. I am telling you what you need to know and then you have to figure out if it lives in your world. I always feel like knowledge is power and if you know, then you know what you're dealing with. The problem is when you don't know and you go into something blindly and you think it's paradise and it is not. I don't like that so I like for you to know everything and then with the flaws, if you say, all right, you know, I can deal with that, that is the way I think you should enter into moving into a new city. So as always, not telling you what to do or where to live, but I'm definitely telling you the things that are going on in these communities and why they may be problematic for you. Now, if you're a seller in any of these communities, we've got some talking to do because you need a unique selling proposition in order to sell your home because the communities that I'm going to tell you about today have a lot, a lot, a lot of homes on the market. So from a buyer's perspective, some of these communities are being brought up because people perceive it as a place that they could get a good deal and that is definitely possible. But if you're getting a good deal, that's really in the eye of the beholder. So again, if you're a buyer, we need to talk through and get you educated. If you're a seller, you know, if you can, I'd consider taking your home off the market until things calm down a little bit. All right, let's start with the first one, which is Cape Coral. Now, if you're unfamiliar, Cape Coral is in Southwest Florida and it sits between Fort Myers and Punta Gorda, right? Kind of in the middle there. Here's the thing with Cape Coral. A lot of people don't realize that Cape Coral does not have a beach. It has this little area they call the Yacht Club area, but that is not a beach at all. It is not a beach in what you're thinking of a beach. Cape Coral is a place that a lot of people think of boating because if you look at it on a map, you can see all of the water access in there. Now here's where the problem comes in. A lot of the canals in Cape Coral are very narrow. So that's one thing you really do have to consider if you're buying a home on water. I always say the bigger the body of water, the more expensive and more valuable the home because those narrow canals are hard to navigate. They also will rise and fall with the tide, which, which can be enormously problematic. And red tide, don't forget about red tide. Cape Coral had a lot of problems with red tide and every single year it does pretty much repeat itself. As that red tide comes through, all of the dead fish will kind of gather in those narrow canals. It stinks. It's scary looking with all the floating fish everywhere. And if you're on the end of the canal, then everything comes down that direction. Trash, the dead fish. Listen, I'm just telling you reality because I, I need you to know these things. So that's the first problem. If you do a home in Cape Coral on a canal, you want the canal to be as wide as you can get it. And that is search criteria. We can search that way. The next thing is proximity to open water. So uh, we have this part of Cape Coral that we call the miserable mile because you will idle out to open water, go through a lock, it takes over an hour to get out to open water. Now you might say, well, I don't care. I'm moving from Michigan. It doesn't matter to me. I just want to be in the sunshine. That sounds wonderful to be on a boat for an hour just cruising through the canal. No, 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 no. It isn't like that. You have rise and fall of the tide. You have areas that are difficult to get in and out of. You have, you have unbelievable heat. We boat, my husband and I boat. I'm gonna tell you what, 
I have gotten stuck going out through Marco Island out that direction to Key Waden. We have gotten stuck like in a line of boats going slowly out a section out to those islands. And let me tell you what, my skin, I got some of the worst burns on a boat ever. And you can protect yourself from that, but unless your boat is shaded, it can truly be miserable. Now, the other thing about Cape Coral that people do not realize is that it doesn't feel resorty, okay? It does not feel like Naples. I have had so many people say to me, I rented in Cape Coral because I always rent in Naples, but I couldn't find anything in Naples, so I rented a home in Cape Coral, and it is not Naples. So it isn't. It does not have that upscale, boutique-y, fun restaurant. It's nothing like that. To me, the way that I would look at Cape Coral is it's like living in sort of the suburbs, probably where you're coming from up north, but with palm trees. And you still have to drive about probably 40 minutes-ish to the nearest beach. There are beaches, and you might be totally okay with driving 40 minutes to the beach. But if you're thinking of it as like you visited Naples and Cape Coral is a cheaper version of Naples, it is not. Number two, Lehigh Acres. That has been brought up a lot recently because people are noticing online from afar that you can get a new home for much less expensive. So for around $350,000, you can get a three-bedroom, two-bath, two-car garage pool home in Lehigh Acres. So people think, okay, Lehigh, in a certain part of Lehigh, you're tipping Estero. So you're tipping Fort Myers. They're familiar with these areas. They've been to these areas, but they've never heard of Lehigh Acres. And they're thinking, okay, it's right outside of these areas that I really, really love. So it's probably exactly like those areas. And it isn't. It's far enough from the beach that it's, it's quite a bit of a drive, especially during season and the direction you have to come to get to a beach. You're going through a lot of traffic to get there. There's also, again, none of that resorty type of shopping. You know, cute Florida restaurants, cute Florida boutiques. It is not considered upscale at all. It's kind of Lehigh Acres is the area where people live and work. So sort of like regular life, if I can put it that way, where you've got maybe your Kohl's, your Target, your Walmart about 20 minutes away or possibly more, depending on where, what part of Lehigh you live in. But it's not a thriving, booming place that anyone visits. And sometimes people get lured in just based upon price point alone. And one thing that I always tell my buyers is do your due diligence. Know the area and do not make any assumptions about this area being like a junior to this area just because it's close by. So Lehigh, can you buy a home for less? 100% yes you can. But will it have the things you want? Will it have the nightlife you want? Like, you know, the walking trails and all of the beautiful scenery and the little shops and the accessibility to beaches and golf courses. On those things, I'm going to have to say no, 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 no. But as I always say, maybe that doesn't matter to you and you just want affordability and you're more than happy to drive to the nearest golf course. And then the third one I would bring up is Bradenton. Now, Bradenton is close to Tampa. It's really like between Tampa and Sarasota. But Bradenton is not Tampa or Sarasota. They do have a lovely beach. I will say that Bradenton definitely has a lovely beach. But again, it's one of those places that I would equate more to you're living in the suburbs and there so happens to be some palm trees and maybe a little beautiful scenery here and there. But it definitely does not give me that resort feel at all. There aren't the things you're going to find in Sarasota there. There aren't the things you're going to find in Naples there. It is more of a live work type of community. The affordability is better than Sarasota. The affordability is definitely better than like Naples or Anna Maria Island or somewhere like that. Now, why is that? 
because those amenities that you might be looking for are not there. Bradenton is n another area where people will say, but it's so inexpensive. And yes, it is. I would say to you, equate that to something where you live, wherever you are coming from. There are probably communities around you where you would say, yeah, that community is very inexpensive, but it doesn't have A, B, C, D, E, or A, B, C, D, E are things I absolutely don't like. That's sort of what Bradenton is like. Yes, there's a beach. Yes, yes you have good proximity to beautiful beaches but you are definitely lacking that resort style feel. Now, the one thing I will say is that in Bradenton, they're growing. They are spreading out and building new construction that provides really nice amenities. Golf courses and lap pools and resort pools and things to do within the community, which is really important. For some people, if you have everything in your community, like I'll give you an example, Babcock Ranch is a community right outside of Fort Myers, and it's on its own little, I'm going to use the word island, but it's definitely not an island. It's kind of out Babcock Ranch, just the word ranch tells you. It's out in the flatlands in Florida, but what they, it's huge. It's a huge community. But what they've done is they've said, okay, if you're willing to go an hour off the beaten path, then we're willing to give you everything you want. We're going to give you pools. We're going to give you shopping within the community. We're going to give you tennis and pickleball and a sense of community. We're going to put a church within the community. We're going to give you a grocery store within the community. So somewhere like Babcock Ranch might work for you if you want a little bit better affordability and you have no problem driving an hour to the beach. So there are communities that that are what I would call one-off communities that might be sort of like the Goldilocks for you, that it doesn't quite hit all the notes, but maybe you're kind of bumping up against a budget, so you're willing to make some concessions. That type of community could work. Lakewood Ranch, right outside of Sarasota, that's another one that might be able to work for you as well. But the three communities I just mentioned, Cape Coral, Lehigh Acres, and Bradenton, those are three that I think people can get tempted by. But if you don't know the area, if you have not been there, I always say spend a little time there. Rent there. If you think you want to buy, rent there. Invest in one month and see how you enjoy life before you make a buy decision.